I was looking at a bunch of mock drafts today because mm -hmm. I, I literally have forfeited what's left of my life. And half of them have them in the lottery and half of them don't. Mm. And I'm finding that nationally, people are starting to bend their heads around the idea that these guys might, might not be good enough to be one of the top 20 teams. Right. And that to me is a fascinating take only because around here that's considered heresy. Mm -hmm. But nationally they've looked at actually what they've done, not what they imagine they could do. And they've made not objective judgments, but they've made dispassionate ones about these guys don't look good enough. Mm -hmm. And maybe it might be time to start thinking about them, not just as, the team that's going to get healthy late in the year and then make this glorious run to the final and start considering the possibility that maybe they don't get it squared away and suddenly they are in the lottery. And there are a lot of people that we've seen talk about other teams that have been in this position. And it's crazy looking at how every step of the way we've come with the Warriors, all of the, for lack of a better term, excuses that people have had They've started to drop off, Ray. At the beginning of the season, well, it's championship hangover. They had a short off season. Then a little later in the season, well, we just got to get healthy. We're still trying to figure it out. We're bringing in new pieces. You would hear Jamichael Green is healthy. And what did I keep hearing? What did I, da Dante DiVincenzo wasn't healthy. What did I keep hearing, Ray, B towards the end of the year? You know what I kept hearing? Well, you know the Celtics. Celtics were about a 500 team in January. Then they turned it on. I said, okay, that, that's fine. And now here we are with 24 games left, whether you're a member of Dub Nation, whether you're a fan of basketball, whether you're in the media, everybody's looking around now with, what is it, 24 games left and thinking, I don't know if these guys are going to be able to pull it off. The, the feat that we are asking the Warriors to pull off continues to get larger. It continues to get more difficult. Well, and the wild card about the Celtics last year was they weren't overcoming a health issue. They What they were overcoming was the fact that they couldn't figure out how to play the way Ime Udoka wanted them to play. Mm -hmm. And it took about 40 games for you know, Tatum and Brown to finally figure out, you know, Maybe the maybe playing on the same page would help us more than what we're doing now. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it clicked, and it's clicked now with a with a brand new coach. Mm -hmm. But the Warriors don't have, you know, that situation. They're they're not they're erratic and they're not healthy, and they're not, they're not healthy at two key spots right now. So, first of all, those guys have to get back to being able to play. And B, there doesn't, there has to be no discernible, you know, run-in time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't let them round back into shape. They've got to hit the ground running because, at least in the Curry situation, there won't be a lot of games left. No. And looking at the rest of the season, like you said, you're hoping, or the hope is for a 15-9. and nine. What happens, Ray, if they go out, and we're looking at this schedule right now, what happens if they go out and it's just it's just not great? It's just not great. Let, let's say well, they lose today. At what point, let's see who they lose to the Lakers. We'll give you the Rockets. Actually, they, they have a little bit of a nice runway here, but who knows? But let's say you, you lose to the Lakers, beat the Rockets. I say between Timberwolves and Trailblazers, if they're going to continue to sit Dame and they're in tank mode, you're 2-2 two and two now. Maybe you lose to the T-Wolves because you're, you're this year's version of the Warriors. You're two and two, and then you get Pelicans or Clippers, Pelicans, and Lakers again. What happens if you're looking up and the Warriors are are staring at, I don't know, the first ten? Let's say they go three and seven. At what point, if you are Joe Lacob, look, Bob Myers, he doesn't know if he's coming back anyway. When do you start looking long term and and start to think, what do we do with Steph? Because we're three and ten right now. We're not off to a good start. Let's say they've either stayed, stayed steady or slipped a little bit. Do you say uncle at any point sooner than what people are expecting? We just saw how quick these first games came. These next 24 are going to go even faster. Well, you don't 
you don't throw in the towel, first of all, because Curry won't tolerate it. And you need to be particularly mindful of his frame, mm -hmm. of his mind frame. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not here to, to glide path into the end of the season. Right. You know, if they're, even if they're three and seven, you know, if that would make them 32 and 36 with 14 to go. It's not impossible for them to sneak into the play in game. But even if they don't, I think he would want his organization to make the most honest effort because they can't take and tank enough to get a, a great percentage in the lottery. So you might as well go for it. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, what are you going to you know, deliberately lose a bunch of games so that you can have a 12% chance rather than an 8% chance? Well, here, well, and then, so here comes the question. Sure, not throw in the towel. But at what point does this turn more into a pride thing versus, yeah, we all we got to do is get in. I just can't see you getting into the playing game and winning the whole thing. That would be the feat among feats. But are we starting to look at this in terms of a, a pride thing? And I saw some people saying, well, if LeBron misses the playoffs again with, that, with Anthony Davis, it's a stain on his legacy. Would this be looked at as as a stain on Steph's legacy? No, because it's not. If the Lakers miss the playoffs, it's not a stain on LeBron James's legacy. I mean that that's the word legacy infuriates me anyway. I'm not surprised by that. I mean, if the Lakers lost their last twenty three, mm -hmm. do you think somebody's going to say, "Well, I really thought that LeBron was one of the five best players of all time, and now I rank him thirty third? Nobody's going to do that. Nobody would do that. No, nobody's going to change their opinion on LeBron James either way. I mean, nobody's going to change their opinion on Curry either way, uh, just on the basis of, you know, one bad post All-Star break. Mm -hmm. No, I think, you know, those guys, their their reputations are, you know, etched in granite. So that's not going to that's not going to matter. Um in terms of pride, there are worse reasons to go out and bust your ass. Yeah, you know, why not why not play hard? You know, if if not for yourself, then for the idea that you want to, you know, leave a leave a notion for next year that you didn't mail it in, that you didn't give up. I mean, if the Warriors decided in this preposterous scenario mm -hmm. to just say, "Ah, we're done." and still have a dozen games to go, I don't know that you rub that off very easily. No. Because teams that tank, unless they get that generational player that Wembanyama is supposed to be, they end up being the teams that tank the next year. You know, it takes a while to pull yourself not only out of that place in the standings, but that place in your own head. Mm -hmm. And even the two years where the Warriors were awful, they could say, well, we, we, we had no players. Right. Uh, this time, <clears throat> they'd have players, and they'd still go in the can. I, I don't think that I don't think that would sit well with any of the players. No, because at that point, what you what the Warriors are telling everybody involved, employees, you know, fans, everything. There are there are limits to what we're going to try to do. When in fact, what they've been selling all along was there's nothing we can't do. Once we get healthy. And that might be a fallacy, but it's sure a lot better than, eh, we suck, we give up. And I don't think, I guess it's a version of what, quote unquote, mailing it in would look like. Would it be, we're just not going to rush Steph back? Would it be the Clay Thompson, we're, we're not going to play him in back-to-backs? We're not going to rush GP2 back, even though I don't even know if you did rush him back, if he would be ready for the regular season. I don't know what it looks like. So maybe it's not about the throwing in the towel and more about, hey, at this point, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get in. We're trying to get in, but we understand that we're looking around and it's just not clicking this. But even at that, they're not operating in a vacuum because mm -hmm. there are a bunch of other teams with their record or worse yeah. who are going to be up and down every night. So I don't know that the Warriors can lose enough to fall out of this unless they go on a 12 game losing streak. And that would be, there and would I be don't, no reason to do yeah. that. So, you know, I think it'd be hard to just say, you know what? We are going to be, we're not going to be a play in team. We refuse. Mm -hmm.
because there are about five other teams that are going to be standing in their way there. I mean, because they're stuck like right in the middle of this big blood clot. Mm -hmm. You know, so they have to, you know, carve through five teams either way. And, you know, I don't know that that's going to be terribly easy for them. So they may as well just go as hard as they can, try to get the best position they can, and then let April be April. 